I'm going to show you how to make alternative book covers like these in Canva. I made a video a while back about how to do this using Adobe Illustrator, but to be honest, I think it's easier in Canva and you don't have to pay $50 for Adobe Creative Cloud to do it. I'm currently working on trying to build out a little store of alternative book covers that you can download and print for yourself, but I also wanted to share the process in case you had something specific you wanted to make for yourself. I'm going to be using a picture of a sword because I'm trying to make a little set of like swords and daggers and stuff so that I can turn my bookshelf into an armory of sorts. I think it'd be so fun. Very throne of glass vibes. So pull up Canva if you want to follow along and let's get into it. All right. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into Canva and pick create a design and then go to custom. These are the three sizes that most hard covers come in standard. I'm probably going to go ahead and do 22 by 9.5 inches. That tends to be Sarah J Mass size book covers. And so it'll bring you to this page right here to get the picture you're going to use for your cover, go to uploads, and then you can pick whatever picture you you want to add in. I'm going to try a couple different ones. Out of these three, I think this one's probably my favorite, but I did uh, just work on this one recently. So I'm not going to do this one, but I think, I think I like this one better. So then what you're going to want to do is resize the image. So you want it to just be tall enough. So for this would be here, but the thing is like, I don't like that the sword is up here. So I'm going to resize it just a little bit so that it feels more centered. And then from there, you see, we still have these white edges. Now you could probably do this without filling in the white edges because theoretically our book covers are going to be here, re like rectangles across just the knife. So if this doesn't bother you, feel free to just leave it white. Um, might save you some ink, but I do not like having that. It kind of bothers me. So the way that I have learned to kind of cover this is to control copy, control paste, and then you can flip the image and move it over here. Make sure we're lining up. So it's not a perfect solution, but you know, at least it looks a little better than it did just as white. And so you'll do that process again and flip it horizontally and move it to the edges. And so now we have this kind of more uniform look across the whole thing. And what I really like about using Canva instead of Illustrator is that it kind of automatically crops everything. So you don't have like extra picture off the side running into different artboards. This makes it a lot of a cleaner process. So your first artboard is going to be your center book. So ideally we would want the spine to be the center of the sword. So you'll go to elements and get a rectangle. Once you have your rectangle, you'll want to click position and then edit it to be the height of the book cover. So in my case, that is 9.5 inches. I'll move that into place. And then I recommend doing 1.8 inches as your like width. I find that that is a pretty good width for most fantasy novels. So if you know you're going to be covering something that's really thick, go ahead and measure that in advance. And if you want to get really technical, you can measure each book that you're going to be covering. But overall, I found that 1.8 inches is sort of a good rule of thumb. So from here, this is where we avoid doing any and all math. You'll want to first make sure that this is centered. So you'll see this sort of solid line appear when you're exactly in the center of the artboard. So go ahead and put it there and then add a page. And then we're going to copy everything. All you have to do is click and drag and it'll select all three versions of the knife that we have here, like these ones going off to the side and our center spine. So control copy and then just bring it into the next artboard. Control paste. So let's move to the right first. <laughs> everything is still selected. So we're going to pick it up and move it over. So see how this is sort of lined up with this right here. So just kind of drag it so that in theory, these are spines set right next to one another. So I click out of it and then get the rectangle and create another one. So this is when we want to recenter and see how there's a little bit of overlap between the two. For this one, it's not that bad. If it was moved all the way over here and you could clearly see like there's a huge overlap, you just want to scoot it out so that there isn't any gap, but there isn't any overlap. You want them sitting right next to each other. And then I would delete this spine and we'll just repeat the process. So I'll speed up the video and show you all the way to the right and then all the way to the left.
So we've gotten to the point where we've covered the entire knife. That's really all I want to do. You can add another one. If you have lots of books that you want to cover, you could go ahead and add this extra space just as a nice buffer. But overall, I feel like we're ready to go to the other side of the knife. So, so far we've covered this whole section in cover. So now we have to do this last part. What I recommend doing to make sure copying everything and then bringing it down here. But remember, like we already have this cover in our first artboard, so we don't need a copy of this. You just wanna go ahead and move to the other direction. So shift everything to the left. Since all the spines are the same size, we can just use the one in the fifth artboard and get everything lined up like that. And then you can go ahead and delete it and just continue, but moving in the opposite direction. We've covered the knife up to both edges. That is pretty much it if you wanna go and print those now. All you have to do is take your rectangles and make sure that they don't have any color and that they don't have any border or else that will show up when you print. So right now, if I printed it like this, you, there would be no border. You would just print it out and then put your book in the middle and wrap it around the sides and this would be the cover on the spine. But since I'm making this for my little online shop, I'm gonna go ahead and add the, the like Catsby watermark at the bottom. If you wanna do something like that yourself, if you wanna like make a library type of vibe, you can go ahead and click this and add a border weight. I would just do border weight two so that I can still see it because the black is pretty dark. So you'll wanna go through and do that for each of the spines. No color in it, and then just a border weight of two. If you're going to be adding text, I really recommend turning down the transparency super low. It depends on what style you're going for, but I think if you're doing like a watermark type of thing, you want it to be a little bit see-through or else it stands out really harshly against a dark background like this. You'll wanna go in and center it as best you can. And so you can see here, it's pretty well centered. Canva's really nice because it almost remembers what you're doing sort of. So if I just copy this and bring it down here to the second artboard, it'll put it exactly in the same space, which is lovely because then you don't have to spend a lot of time switching it around and trying to get it perfectly centered. Now, if you wanted to add titles of your book, so I don't like adding titles just because since I do want to sell these, I don't know what books people have necessarily. And also the licensing is a bit of a mess and I don't have the funds for that right now, maybe later. But if you want to do it, feel free to add it. Just keep it in mind that you would want it facing this direction and you'd want it lined up to 90 degrees if it'll freaking let you like that and then centered. So again, you'll you'll see that line show up for you that says like, hey, you're centered. But if you do go to print these, just keep in mind that some printers, even big people like staples and stuff, they might not let you do it. I've tried to print my own covers, like just for personal use that said Harry Potter on them and they were absolutely not gonna do that for me. So it really depends on who you're printing with and whether or not you can convince them that you're not gonna be selling it. So obviously since I'm selling it, I'm not gonna be doing that right now. But once you have all of your watermarks or any titles that you would like, you'd wanna go through each of these and click on your rectangle again and make sure that you have no border weight. That way when you print them, again, like you won't see this weird rectangle on there. I'm gonna keep it for just a second because I'm going to create a mock-up and show you what it would look like on your shelf just so you can kind of visualize how these things line up to create the whole picture. So I will speed up the video to do that.
So this is what it would kind of look like on your shelf without going out and printing it right now. One thing you'd want to note before printing it is how many books you're going to need to cover. So this would be an eight cover set. So you would want to cover eight books. To get the files to print, all you need to do is click share and then download. And then you can do any of these file types. I would probably do PNG or PDF for print personally. And then um, you can download all nine pages at once and it'll put it in a zip file or you can do individual files at a time so current page or you can you know pick as you go i hope this video helped you out and gave you some fun ideas to work on your own creative projects or if you want to grab this sword or the sword collection that i'm working on i will leave a link to that in the description please like this video if you liked it click subscribe if you want to talk about more book stuff my name is caitlin thanks for watching bye